a lot of real shit goes down. So shit, yeah, you're talking about serious shit. <laughs> yeah. Even more so now. I just put in a uh, zip line yesterday. No way. It's funny you said that. My, I was just at my brother's uh, kids' communion party, and yep. he had just put a zip line in, and all these little like kids, second graders. <laughs> I mean, it's fucking intense. Well, I have this video. I have to. Uh, we've been watching it over and over again because it's fucking incredible. Um, to, to me, okay, yeah, yeah. Here, look at this shit. This is hilarious. Middletown, Middletown, Middletown. Is, how's my voice? Good. This is me being a total fucking idiot. Ready? Here we go. Watch this. Check this out. Listen. Holy shit! <laughs> the momentum there. And that, camera, and that camera angle so, hit me. Yeah. That camera angle, I thought and that's, it was one of the kids. That's because... me hitting the ladder. That's that sound. Sounds like a shotgun, is it? <laughs> as soon as I heard that, I was Props expecting. Props for hanging on. Yeah. I can only imagine that force. So I fixed it. This is what it looks like now. I moved it to different trees. Look at that. Now it's... Mm -hmm. Still gives you good... good. That's awesome. Isn't that nice? Ooh. An and that's our fucking Indian. backyard. That's my backyard. Wow. Isn't that crazy? I got a little, little creek running through it. That's so yeah. Awesome. Anyway, so we're we're in this uh, we're in this. It sounds fancy. It's actually really really amazing. Um, it's a loop. Like I said, it's a loop of thirty two houses, but it really feels there's space apart. They're all they're each lot's maybe about a half acre, and there's just these big old growth trees and so on and so forth. Mm. So it's pretty great. Closest but, town to that is uh, like. Um, Swap more, media. Uh, media, media. Media is like media. seven uh, minutes away. Okay, gotcha. my wife works in media, so it's 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 really easy. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, and there's a Lowe's and an Aldi right nearby, so I don't ever fucking leave the house. That's where I go. <laughs> Perfect. Lowe's and Aldi. When did you when did you move out of the city? Because you were right uh, by uh, June of last year. Memphis Tap Room, right? Yeah, right. Rest there. in peace. I just heard that. Yeah, Mariah told me that today. Yeah. Oh, you just heard that today. Just heard it today. Where was Memphis Tap Room? It sounds familiar. Was it was Cumberland and Memphis. So like Fishtown ish. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I lived out there for a year, right on uh, Howard and Montgomery. Sure. So it's actually the edge of Kensington, uh -huh. but they were kind of marketing it as yeah. I mean Fishtown became everything. Fishtown. Everything was everything Fishtown. around. And then yeah. they had then they then we were in Nola, No Yo, north of York. You know, uh, <laughs> I never even heard. I never heard of that. That's good. Yeah, you, that's you, deep. So you kind of yourself lucky. I feel I feel like realtors and real estate will like. They'll try. They'll they'll come up with a nickname like that, and then just market the out of it. Like, oh, yep. this is trendy now. Yeah. So it was. I mean, we we, we bought our house out there, um, on Sargent Street in two thousand nine. So it was. Before, mm -hmm. So Memphis Tavern was really the only non residential thing that north of York. That was. It was like the only north, one destination beer bar. Destination beer bar, yeah, right? Yeah. But but it was all just residential around it, you know. So it was the only place. Yeah. And, um. And then, of course, between 2009 and when we moved out, 2022, um, it was just bonkers. Yeah. The great, great bar, Kung Fu Necktie. Yeah, I, I, that was walking one. distance from me. I'd have been there. Kung Fu, great bands. Mm -hmm. They would have great bands on the first floor, and they had a real small stage on the second floor. But I would, you know, go see bands there. They had a dive bar called the L Bar, which was a little closer to my house. But it was all right there yeah. under Front Street. I, I, sure. I enjoyed it. That's what's up. HT, yeah. are we rolling? Great. For our listeners out there and viewers, we have a, a very special guest tonight, our friend Andrew Lipke, multi-instrumentalist, yes. vocalist, yes. yes, check, engineer, producer, arranger, composer, yeah, all around real one. What am that I missing? That sounds good. I like that. What am I missing? Conductor. Conductor, Conductor yeah. right? That's Father. True. Father, of course. Great husband. Father. Great father and husband. Zipliner. <laughs> Outdoorsman. <laughs> Builder. <laughs> Outdoorsman. Yeah. Builder. <laughs> Uh, idiot. Yes. I think you forgot idiot. <laughs> the the multifaceted <laughs> Andrew Lipke is in the house. Great to have you. Oh, thanks for having me. Really nice to have you. I haven't seen you in a while. It's been a while. Last yeah. time I saw you was at the World Cafe Live. That's right. For During non-com. That was four years ago at this point. Are you still working for the... Are um, you still doing beer stuff? Uh, I am, yeah. I am I am right now, but I'm no Great. longer with BrewDog. Okay. I was the Philadelphia rep for BrewDog, mm. and we had... We were the, I landed the sponsorship of Noncom at XPN four years this. ago, yeah. 2019, I guess, and um, I ran into you there. They just had Noncom last week. Yeah. Yep. So, and that's why all that shit showed up in my time hop. Right. And I was ago. That was four years ago. Morrissey oh. kicked off the festivities oh, that year. God. Yes. And I remember being 
petrified that I finally landed this big sponsorship and I'm growing the brand in Philadelphia and Morris he's playing. Yeah. And I represent the brewery that threw dead cats out of helicopters <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to promote a beer in England. Meanwhile, I'm trying to get Wait, 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 hold on. They did what? They threw dead which is What's wrong with these people? Super questionable to begin with. Yeah, like I'm not say. saying it's harmless. It's, it's weird and awful. graphic. Um they they promoted a beer by throwing dead cats out of a helicopter and like the, the dead cats had like they're frozen. Not that that makes it better. <laughs> but they had some kind of brew dog brand on. This is also the brewery that brought that brought you the squirrel beer where it was a taxidermied squirrel head vertical for those that are listening with the beer bottle into the squirrel. If the brew dog, they pride they pride themselves on doing things that are crazy, wow. but sometimes borderline but, nightmares. And Marcy yeah, won't wow, let that, that slide. Because if anyone's going to, he ain't letting that slide. I'm at World Cafe, and they're talking about how they have to get all the meat out, and how they've rented mm -hmm. refrigerated trailers to get all the meat out while they're hanging brew dog signs. And I'm like, fuck, he's going to realize yeah, he's last gonna second, and he's going to pull, and everyone's going to be, gonna be your it. fault. And he did, he didn't. But yeah. uh, I was, I was nervous the whole time. Yeah. But yeah, I ran into you at Noncom, mm -hmm. and um, I've only run into you, unfortunately, a few times in the last ten years or so. But, but you were the producer. Of of my album, right on time, which That's is, correct. is ten years old, wow. which is wild. Um, I, I gave it a listen this morning. I revisited it. Still proud of it. We did some good Excellent. stuff. Yeah, I reached yeah. out to John Ardito that played drums. Oh yeah, Mitch Beer that played bass. Yep, I said, guys, sure. I said we have Andrew on tonight. I'll tell him you said. I'll tell him you said hello. Like we say hi, and uh, yeah, running through the album. It's good stuff. That's great. How yeah. often do you do that? Do you do um, produce albums? You know, kind of record. Um, do the these, engineer these kind of days stuff. not not as much um yeah these days not as much i have a project i'm working on um kind of consistently with a, a fellow who i was in a band with in um i guess 2004 2003 2004 so um what is that 17 18 19 wow. years ago so wild how like 10, 20, yeah, yeah. 20. Is it oh, almost damn. right? It'll be almost 20 years ago. Um, 2004, five, six, or maybe it was 2005. Anyway, around uh, that yeah, period of yeah. time called Vista was the name of the band. And that band broke up. I ended up kind of wanted to sort of do my own thing and they were moving anyway. So, but I kind of kept moderately in touch with them, you know, occasionally through the years. And then we reconnected during COVID and then he approached me and said, hey, if I have, he'd still been playing guitar. He was a guitar player and he had kind of written some sort of guitar riffs and things that were sort of pieces of songs, like like this kind of part and that kind of part. And, and some of them were sort of a full song, but he didn't have lyrics and didn't have a melody or anything like that. And he said, hey, you know, would you be interested in, um, if I gave you these things, would you be interested in kind of turning them into songs? And I said, sure. And so that kind of turned into a full album and um he has a successful business um that allows him to be able to su sort of support th this as kind of like a vanity project yeah. although now it's turned into something where he so he's put together a live band and we are starting to do some performances and it's all kind of around um a veteran support situation Incredible. Um, yeah, incredible. That's he, very incredible. he has yeah. a an organization called Viamed is the name of his business. His name is uh, Phil Newman, and anyway, he he does. I think what they do is virtual medical diagnosis. I think so, something like that. Me. But they yeah. have like a platform, and and they, they have a lot of well, they have a lot of <laughs> they have a lot of the armed services contracts. Great. So I think they have the National Guard and blah, blah, I don't know, but so they're very much involved in that, but. That's none of my. That's none of my concern, really. All I'm doing is sort of the same, same kind of thing, where she, he'll have s sort of instrumental kind of '90s feeling electric guitar stuff, and then I'll take it and just sort of do all the rest of it in my studio. So I'm doing that stuff. That's great. Um, yeah, that's 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 a cool project that you're yeah. kind of taking that and yeah, and just trying to find a way to sort of it. so. Yeah. And it's called the the Mission is the name of the band M S H N, and um. Yeah, so th so that I've been doing a bunch in the new studio, um, and I you know still work on my own stuff, and then, but I've been doing a lot of kind of pencil and paper stuff, so a lot of orchestration and a lot of arranging and a lot of work with putting together shows, and 
I'm creating music for orchestras. So it's been it's been more of that than like the engineering producing stuff. So that's sick. So for for our listeners and and viewers that aren't already familiar with you, can we take it back to sure. just from the beginning? Well, I was born through C-section. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. And I Fair had enough. A, uh, Epidermal or none? Yeah, no, I don't no. think so. My mom, my mom almost died actually because this was in South Africa, and I had something called pyloric stenosis, which is a, a relatively rare. I don't know how rare it is, but I should have died. I wouldn't have lived if it had been not the twentieth century. Whoa. Because you have basically the gland at the bottom of your stomach that allows food to continue on into your intestines doesn't work. And so you get food in your stomach and then eventually you just projectile vomit it out. Oh, it doesn't And then you'll just down. die. Yeah. That's a bit uncouth. Yeah. It's nice you got that. Yeah, I was of. like a demon baby essentially. <laughs> and they but they operated on it. Um, but they when they were when they were stitching my mom up, they like didn't do it right and she got a blood clot. So she would could have been able to like sue yeah. for for buckets of, Big of bucks money. Days, yeah, yeah, but yeah. not in South Africa. Sure, not, nah. that, not then. So Mandela was still around then, right? Mandela was well, was no, he in prison? no, he was still no, he was in, in prison. Jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was yeah. he was he wasn't getting around much, but yeah, he was right, around. Right. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, that was before apartheid had ended, and we knew that it was time to. You know, my 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 parents knew that it was time to get out of the country. It just was a bad place to be. You know, it, 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 they weren't supportive of apartheid but you were in a situation where there wasn't really anything you could do about right, it numbers um so we left in 87 um and then you it's would just have been, been nine or ten i was nine yeah okay. okay yep i was nine and so then a couple uh, years older than me yep and then it just was all downhill from <laughs> to philadelphia so you came right to philadelphia <laughs> no 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 i came to, i went to virginia that went was virginia. the peak <laughs> yeah that was the peak went to virginia and went it's to, early uh similar to dave matthew's story I guess. Actually, I mean, South Africa, Virginia. South Africa, Virginia. Virginia yeah, mm-hmm. okay. That's it, probably. But. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then I came up to to uh, Philadelphia for University of the Arts, and I and I got a degree in music composition there. And then, when did you start with with music? Was it grade school? Pretty early. Did yeah. you take to it? Did you, did you come from a musical family? Not really. My my dad, my mom loves loves music. Like. Music is her whole world, but she's not musical in the sense that she's not a performer or a singer or anything like mm. that, but she's a connoisseur of the music that she loves. And it, it's sort of everything for her. Music is everything for her. So in that respect, there's definitely something in the um, kind of emotional reaction that it causes. Yeah. Um, but for me, I think the the it really began... I was exposed to music through the church. My dad's a minister, so I heard a lot of music in the church, and it and it and I, I felt things, you know, like it, it was the sort of part that was most interesting to me about everything that was going on, all the different kinds of music. And then I had it always seemed like the coolest stuff was connected to music. <laughs> I remember yeah, thinking that yeah. when I was a kid. Like, the coolest we, look, fashion, everything. everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah, it was yeah. always somehow connected to music. And that was what I was drawn to. And mm-hmm. and so, like, I had uh, my father's sister and her husband died in a car accident, and they had two kids. Um, the son was 19, and the daughter, I think, might have been 14 or 15. I'm not 100% sure, but they came to live with us before we left the country. And he, he stayed in the room out, in the garage, there was a, my dad's a Methodist minister. So the Methodist church, uh, the ministers live in what are called like parsonages. We call them manses. I never heard that word. Mm. Yeah. A parsonage nice. or a manse is essentially. Is like a monastery? The equivalent of. No, 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 no. It's like, it's just a house it's that a, the church owns. Okay. Like a loft area. Like, no, just uh, like a house. That the church owns. That the church owns. And sometimes, most of the time it's next to the church. Okay. But sometimes it can be further away. But essentially part of the deal, you don't get as high a salary, but you don't have to pay for a house. And basically, but it also means that they can kind of move you whenever they want to. Okay. Oh, maybe right. like a so, rectory or something. The Catholic church. Like yeah, yeah. St. Joe's had a rectory off. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The only difference would be, I guess, in the Methodist church, and in a lot of other churches that have the same sort of situation, the the preachers have families. Yeah. So they need a house that kind of can support that. But anyway, so w- there was this room off off in the garage, and Gregory, who was my stepbrother, he was there, and he he was in a rock and roll. And, and I have, like, <sighs> in my memory, I have something, which I've either I've either crafted it over time to be, 
as incredible Romantic. as it is, or it really yeah. was the that incredible. The memory. Yeah. But I, I'm walking in. I walk into his room, and he has these posters all around his room, and they're like one of them's like a, a drawing of a naked silver girl, like on a tree, and it says like heavy metal, and then the other one's like a girl with the guitars. I mean, it's all this stuff, and as I'm walking around staring at these posters. Um, the op- the intro to um, Money for Nothing is playing, you know, with the guitar buildup. You know what I'm yeah, talking sure. about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But before that, where it's just like... Oh, oh the atmospheric, the pads and all that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm like... Oh, I'm looking around. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I'm just like, in, oh yeah. yeah, you know, like fuck yeah, like, like that's so, that's yeah. that's how I remember it in my head, you know. So that's yeah, that's a moment right there when that kicks in. Like I could see that being like a whoa, <laughs> something different's happening here. This is yeah. this is big. Yeah, I'm this, like, this, I'm attracted I want, to this. I want yeah. this shit. You know, yeah, so there was I could that, see that and being then the perfect storm. Yeah, of, and then like, and then and then in nine, and then when I was nine years old, there was this girl, like I, the first girl I just had like fall in love love at first sight we just moved to america this little town called cartersville and there was a girl who her name is jamie awad um shout out jamie awad she's met facebook messenger from andrew <laughs> yeah she, yeah she's Hi. she's she's um but there was this little country town that had one store bland and pleasant it was just every you got everything you got your feed and your you know, deli meat and your batteries and everything from this one little store. Mm. Feed, deli meat, and batteries in one store? Mm. You rented your videos from there, your VHS videos. It was everything. All right. It was the Bland and Pleasant store. They also had the mechanic, which was also the fireplace, which was also where you went to Boy Scouts, and then there was like the medical center, and that was it. That was like the center of town or whatever. I can see why. And I remember remember this moment, too. I'm like walking to Bland and Pleasant, and she turns the corner, and it's like, oh, dream. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's yeah, windy all it's of a sudden. Incredible, right? And she's like, she had this blue, like, like checkered sort of one of those country like blue plaid dress things. You know, incredible. So I, I just was like, I just, my one of it was the first sort of like, oh my god. Also, then, incredible atmospheric beginning to that song too. All the oh yeah, uh, yep, absolutely, yeah, so beautiful, yeah. yeah. So anyway, so so her dad was. Um, what was his name? He was a he had a song called "Sweet Virginia Breeze." He was he was a singer songwriter, but pretty successful at a studio and stuff like that. And I wasn't I wasn't so much interested in that at that point. I was interested in wanting to hang out with her. She became friends with my sister. We were both in the same grade in the school, and the school wanted to do a pageant. And they're like, "All right, well, you know, let's see, can any of these kids sing?" I still remember the words, the song, the whole thing. Like the pageant was. You know, grades, people would sing, and then another grade would dress up and, and act. And it was all about having a job. It was called growing up great. Mm. Growing up great. Mm-hmm. Growing Keep up great. Keep your head down and just do your job. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. It wasn't yeah. question your hours. Yeah, it did, right. It wasn't, <laughs> not, wasn't the, not the truth, uh, the American job, like yeah, the, the dreamy right. one. Yeah, <laughs> they, they didn't bring the truth there. But I remember singing, like singing one of the things, and I remember the sort of music teacher lady was like, okay. There's something here. Yeah, can you do that again? And I was like, okay. And I'm just, okay. You know, and, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. and anyway, so then they were like, all right, this guy can sing. And, and I was like, okay, I guess I can sing. But then, so Jamie was also a singer. So, and they and it ended with the Maypole where you like go and like, do you guys familiar with Maypole? Have you ever done, have you seen this Maypole thing? Have you ever seen any of these things? Yeah. So there's, there's, yeah, it's like okay. a ring around the rosy, and you're like, mm-hmm. it's like a German thing, I guess. And this school that we were going to, they they celebrated May Day with the Maypole. And there's schools that celebrate it all around the country. And there was May King and May Queen. And because I could sing and she could sing, it was I got to be the king and she was the queen. How's that for reinforcement? You know what I mean? It's all <laughs> just like this is where <laughs> this is where it's at. at. This is where it's at. Yep. And so and so that so then it was that was it. And I was just like, all right, well, I'm just gonna do this. Intriguing. I don't think I ever got that story out of Yeah. Here. I'm just gonna do this as, as much That's as funny. possible. In high school too, like I remember like, you know, everybody wanted to be the football player and all that. And I I, I happened to play football and I was in the music. So I, I sang, play guitar. I do it with Mike. We were in a band together, just so we we know. But uh so I played guitar, I was musical and I did that. But then I remember telling like my mom, I'm like, 
there's girls that, that 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 are in this that sing in the play and stuff like that so like it was always such a like an avenue for me where i'm like yeah i, I definitely like music more. like i remember growing up and yeah. i remember getting that emotional response <clears throat> to music um mm -hmm. early on and um i i was never my parents loved music a lot of barry white yeah a lot of motown yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. yeah cool. a heavy barry white and um Loved, always loved music. My uncle played. I was never exposed to playing an instrument or anything. But I remember going into senior year, Bonner was on strike, and we right. had a party at Billy Skaggs' house. And Mike and another one of our buddies that played guitar were playing in the corner, and it was this packed party. And, and I was, I was wa watching them play, and I loved it. And I kind of looked around and realized I was the only guy in the room. And it was all the chicks loving the guitar. I'm like, I, I need to be one of these guys. Yeah. It's about time I learn. You know what's yep. funny? You said about like you had an uncle play, and you said it you didn't necessarily have a parent who played like same thing for my family. Like my, my, but my dad was an intense fan. And I remembered like, I was like really, really young kid. I remember we were on a family vacation and the only tape that was in the car was the band, the last waltz. Mm. And I remember being like, Oh, I don't want to listen to your music. Blah, blah, blah. And then I remember like two short years later, I was like, Oh my, I can't believe I said that. It's one of those like recurring memories that I remember, like, cause it's, it ends up being the greatest like piece of music. Like I, I love it. But you three might not years later, dislike the music. It's it was, just and it was more the dad cool. thing. And then I remember listening to it later, and every year since. But like, he he wasn't a guitar player, but he is such a, like he still goes to shows every weekend. It, it, member X, XBN, he worked out at Penn actually. But uh, I don't think you necessarily have to come from a line of players. But I think it's that passion that kind of like puts an impression in a kid. Definitely, yeah. yeah. It's weird yeah. how you cannot be. You can be a child and not even think, oh, maybe this might make me feel something, but then it does. So there's something yeah. to be said, like how that kind of passion for music gets passed down. That's, that's, that's interesting that you brought that up. And how like memories are so intertwined with music, like mm -hmm. you so like vividly explain those different scenarios and whatnot. So then, so from there, so you're like, okay, I'm going to double down. Like, do you get a guitar at that point? You, you just try to sing, or is it a piano? Um it was piano. I, I asked to take piano lessons when I was very young, four years old. I was like, I wanted to take piano lessons, but I didn't really have any kind of prodigious skills on the piano. And, and I was kind of, it puts around a lot, you know, like, like I, I didn't necessarily have discipline or focus to be able to really master that instrument or, or kind of uh, do the hard work that it takes to really create that kind of relationship with an instrument. And, and I did a lot of, um, there was a thing called KMT when we lived in Northern Virginia. We lived in Northern Virginia for two years um, in Falls Church. And there was a thing called KMT and it was kids musical theater. And it was put on by the wife of a pastor at a church. And I think... I think it was a Methodist church. It was some some sort of thing connected to the stuff that my dad did. But anyway, it was like musicals. Mm. And I really enjoyed that too. I learned a lot of different kinds of music. I That was a good chance to be around girls in exactly. that respect. Yeah, you know, like, like yeah. and, you know, and like sort of, you know, yeah. dressing up. And also the dudes were cool too. Yeah, really. You know, and I was kind of fascinated by a lot of different parts of it. So I did a lot of that. But then I also was always interested in trying to start a band. So it was mm. always something. And then, I met this dude who somebody, I forget where I heard it, but I think he's passed away now. I think he died in a car accident, but his name was Andre. And he was like the guy who I met. I met him when I was in sixth grade because we moved a lot, clearly. And, and when we moved to Falls Church, I was finished fourth and fifth grade in Cartersville, the little town where Jamie was there. And then we moved to Falls Church and I did... Um, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade there, and then moved back down to just outside Richmond and did high school. But sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, on sixth grade, I met this guy, Andre, and he had a leather jacket and <sighs> long hair. Shout out, Andre. And he looked like like a grown-up thing already. I, I was just like, who the fuck is yeah, that is this guy? guy? Yeah. What Italian I, last name did Andre have? <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, was the I, I feel terrible. I, I, can't, earlier. I can't remember his last name. When you say really that, shitty. when you picture it, when you... Like describe that, I thought of uh, Hutchinson from from uh, In Excess. Like, oh, like that, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, with right. that beautiful hair, like a beautiful man. Like I remember seeing I him mean, as a just, kid. Like wow, like that's fucking rock and roll. Just like you're like I mean, this he had, dude the, he had the leather jacket with the chains Michael and Hutchinson, long yeah. hair and the whole thing. And I was just like, 
how does this guy, how is he, it's, he's, this is fucking yeah. sixth grade. Like, how is this, <laughs> yes. you know what I mean? There's always a couple of those dudes. I couldn't even believe it. So I just annoyed the fuck out of this guy until eventually we became friends. Like, I just made, I just, I wouldn't leave him alone yeah. until he was like, all right, fine. I'll give you a chance, you know? Chicks are fucking hot, huh, huh, man? Yeah. What, yeah. What, 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 he, he was a guitar player. Guitar, he played electric okay. guitar. Uh, and like, he was all, he was, he had Iron Maiden posters on his wall. He was like, his his mom, his dad had was, had been in Vietnam um, and he ended up marrying a, a Thai woman mm -hmm. and brought her back. So she was younger and she was into the same music that he was into. And I couldn't fucking believe that shit because yeah, I came from there. like my dad's a minister, my mom <laughs> liked the things. And it's like, she's into, you know, I remember like we went on a ski trip and we're driving and she's playing fucking uh, hysteria, you know, loud and she's rocking out. I'm like, this is incredible. <laughs> love, love does bite. She's, like, she's like, yeah, I mean, it's fucking insane. And then she's just like the skid row, like she's putting in the skid Fuck row yeah, thing yeah. and it's fucking youth gone wild and shit. And I'm like, oh my God, this person's Sheesh. mom is amazing. So I really attached myself to this dude and he played guitar and I was like, well, I got to play guitar now. Yeah. And so I just begged and begged and begged for, I got an acoustic guitar and it was terrible action. And I remember, but I, but I just, I just spent hours, hours on the, that, then I found something that I kind of was fascinated by trying to solve mm -hmm. um, and was determined not to have any teacher. Like I didn't want a teacher. And so, but although Andre would definitely teach me some stuff. And then I got an electric guitar. And then when we moved, then all of a sudden, when I went to high school, I was able to kind of be like the Andre. You know, because gotcha. I moved to a new, you took, you oh, you, and I had like learned. Yeah. You took that template, if you will. I had learned. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So I had half my head shaved. I wore combat yeah. boots. People, I went yeah. to school. There's some guy there. Who the hell is that's this it. guy? That's yeah. it. Yep. That's yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Is yep. there any truth to like uh, to the layperson out there? I know a lot of people think that it's a little bit better to if you learn piano first mm -hmm. and you have that under understanding. The notes are kind of laid out in front of you. Yeah. Do you think that? It, the background of that with being your first instrument helped you on guitar and I, you're multi instrumentalist. Like, yeah. So do you think that background w was better that you started there? I, I, I wouldn't say that it helped me on guitar, but I would definitely say that it helped me understand the theoretical aspects of music. And it helps me sort of, it, it helps one understand music as a sort of abstract art form. It's a way of kind. It's like learning the color wheel or learning the, um, you know, the alphabet in a way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's it's hard to compare music to things because it's it it doesn't quite compare um, exactly to anything else. But the the piano is an excellent way to be able to visualize the abstract elements of music theory, whereas most of the other instruments. The, the everything's kind of jumbled up and stuck in the same place. Mm -hmm. The piano, it's all you know. One key makes one sound. Yeah, there's no know. bend. There's, there's, there's no. no it's it's linear. Yeah. Like it makes sense in physical space. That's yeah. right. The yeah. left, the, the notes to the left are low, and then yeah. it goes high. We're That's like, right. on and the I think guitar, it, yeah, different notes. And it being laid out in front of you, it gives the mind, I think, a better visual kind of like you know, the possibilities of, you, mm -hmm. the, of what you have. Yeah. With it, guitars, it, there's bending, and then you got an out-of-tune string, and you got to make mm -hmm. up for that. Like, yeah. That's right. There's, there's variables that it, come it, up. It can also, you know, it it can um, create false um, conceptions based upon the way it's laid out, too. But that's only once you get into the more kind of the the deeper aspects of theory like the black key and white key thing can kind of create a false difference between those two notes it can make you think that one key is easier than another one or mm. is you know it, it can give you sort of a weird sense of hierarchy if you're too tied to the piano keyboard as being representative of what music theory is but that's only if you really get deep if into it. If you get it. deep, if you get that. For, for for most I would imagine that has a lot to do with your relationship with music mm. and the way that you feel about certain key. I mean, because like C major would be all white keys. C I major's mean, all white keys, right. And then wouldn't that be considered like a very easy scale to play in where like E flat is a lot of... Exactly, right? for sure, right. But that's that's just the piano. 
but but as a player develops the relationship with the instrument, is that what you mean by the hierarchy? Like where you start to gravitate or, or um, am I missing? N- no, just the, I guess, I guess it's not fair for me to say it's just a piano because it, it it's also sort of how it's been taught. But I think some of that comes from the piano, but it, it's sort of thinking about the relationship between um, certain keys as being like easy and difficult and so on and so forth. And that's, that's not really the case. That's imaginary. You know, it's like, it's all just frequencies. Yeah. There's no different. There's no uh-huh. real, yeah. there's no difference between a C major scale and an F sharp major scale, except for that the frequencies are, are different. Yeah. Maybe the physicality, but, but people think the physicality, physicality of on the it piano is yeah. more difficult, but it's until they make sound, a damn capo right? for the, for the piano. Yeah, until they make a capo, <laughs> right, right, exactly. The physicality of performing yeah. it, but I'm t- talking about in the theoretical and maybe sense. like the, maybe like the, the frequency, like on the human ear that maybe they, they're used to the C and the G, but like the F sharp, like, or the B flat, like me, it's, it makes them go a little like this. So maybe it's something people, you know, stay away you know stay away from and don't know they are i don't know but in my experience the piano players have always been top flight musicians i feel like if you're learning guitar you can kind of learn around shapes but not really know about like the notes that are making up the chord this is just the shape of a g rather than like these are the notes yeah, this, this, that, yeah, that yeah. make up a g sure and i found that piano players are always great singers the pitch is always good their mm-hmm. their harmony singing is is normally really good too and i feel like there's less shortcuts to learning piano and you get a more right. well-rounded facility with music in general. Yeah. It's been my kind of, uh, my experience. When do you become a singer in all, in the, you know, you do your high school bands and the guitar. And- well, just singing all along. And I mean, you know, a thing that happened in high school is, so when I got to high school, they were doing the musical tryout and it was Greece was the musical yeah. they were doing freshman year. And I, I, my jazz had already, I had done like a bunch of the, the musicals and was pretty confident in my singing voice. And so I auditioned and it was kind of like a similar thing. Like the people were like, oh, wow, we have a guy who can sing, you know, which mm-hmm. is not, and it's not that common right. in high school. I mean, yeah. there's plenty lucky of guys you have who can one. sing. And he already has a leather jacket and yeah. swagger. Yeah. He's yeah. in. Yeah, and I look, did. I had the leather a jacket. He's already. Right. I had the leather jacket. Half my head was shaved and the whole thing. Like, but you got one. You're right. In high school, you got one that can hit the hit the notes, and, yeah. you, and then you might have another two or three that can sing. And but, there might be yeah. some really great singers, but they don't want. They don't it. know yet. They don't want yeah. to do the musical. No, They're no, like, you know. And no, so and I remember yeah. being kind of nervous. I was like, oh man, if I'm gonna do this musical, and then it's like people are gonna make fun of me or whatever. Right. Like that, I was thinking it wasn't gonna I, work. I felt that too when I did them. Like total fucking opposite. opposite. I mean, it yeah. was like people respect insane. It. it was like so. So it was like. I was in like like Flynn like high but school. You've arrived. You feel at that point, point and it's, yep. it's double down. It's yeah. done, and then some seniors guys came up. They're like, "Yo, will you sing in our band?" And then the, that, and he was like the super popular senior dude. Yeah. And then like the sports guys, like it, it was it was pro- it was bad. Like because then I Hell became yeah. like way overconfident in high school. This is a major pivotal moment. Yeah, mm-hmm. that that probably gives us the Andrew Lipke that we have today. I did get my heart broken real hard in college. So I, I did, I did, I was able to not become like just a total asshole. Right. Like if that so, hadn't yeah. happened, so there was I would that, pu- there was that yeah, gut that, that punch knocked you back down that got sides. you back. Yep. But, then, yep. but all the really experiences good. you had got you back on your feet pretty quickly. And then, so in college, when, how do you end up in Philadelphia? So, Cause in high school, you're not in Philadelphia yet. No. Um, well, I was, <laughs> I was at one of the, homecoming dances that I was going to. And I went to a lot of homecoming dances. And I went to this one with this girl who was, who I'd met through a traveling choir thing that I had done through the church and um, through my dad's, well, I guess my dad's church conference. But anyway, um, she invited me to her day. And I, we were standing in line to get a picture. And I remember seeing the University of the Arts kind of poster, you know, those college posters on the wall. And it was, just a bunch of people acting crazy in this hall, like just the, kind of like this wild picture. And I was like, what is that place? New York, the arts sounded really cool to me. So I remember getting the little pamphlet and sending away for their book and their book came. And I remember just feeling like, this looks like a cool place. I, I thought Philadelphia was much more of a hustling, bustling city than it ended up being when I first moved there. Like I thought it was much more like New York. Um, but I had applied... When I was in high school, I initially thought that I would become a conductor, of all things, which is funny because it's what I'm, it's what I'm doing a lot of now. Mm-hmm. But like, I thought I would become a conductor, um, and I would major in music education, 
with a minor in voice and go on to conduct choirs and orchestras within a university setting. And so I had applied to the Virginia Commonwealth University, the University of Shenandoah, but then University of Arts, I decided to apply on a whim for composition. Um, and I had only really just kind of like dabbled in it, you know, sort of like, it was very kind of wild mix of stuff. I'd written some songs, I'd been in a band, I'd written some piano stuff, I'd written this and that. It was all just kind of a hodgepodge of stuff. You don't mind me my jumping in. Well, how, how do you make the jump from being a rock guy to wanting to be a composer? And like, where, where's the classical music influence and facility? Like, how did that present itself? I mean, it was weird because it sort of always was all happening at the same time for me. Okay. Like a hodgepodge of Just a hodgepodge, yeah, yeah. Just very much like a... And, and in some respects, it still is, you know? And it's just taken a long time for me to be able to create enough consistency where I can kind of, uh, you know, uh, carve out a living from it. But it still kind of is that. It's just sort of like blindly pursuing my interests you know it's yeah, kind of like yeah. like sort of stumbling and figuring out w w how it, where i stumbled and trying to figure out how to fix it and trying to learn from my mistakes and learn from people who i encounter and then also kind of just going with the flow of my life and and being led to these interesting places but it, it was it was i never really saw a difference you know and i think that mm. that's sort okay. of the same yeah mm -hmm. it wasn't to me like i needed to be one thing or another thing and it it has resulted in at times a, an intense imposter syndrome um, feeling, which I've gotten very used to, because I'm not really one thing. Yeah, like a who am I, and like exactly. uh, like, and I don't belong like in this have, situation, yeah, and, and I don't have the right. But that's to all say internal. This. Yeah, that's it, all internal it is, for sure. It is. Else, but that's just a you know, as an artist, you battle that. You battle yourself, you know, and 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 that's. I think that's why you've been able to be so prolific and make such a good living for yourself is the diversity. Like you, you can do so yeah. many different things. Like you're not just a singer. You're not mm -hmm. just a songwriter. Yeah. Cause somewhere along the way you also learned production. Correct. Pro tools isn't something you can just sit down and, and, it's a, and do right away. Absolutely. And you go pretty deep onto it. And yeah. That uh, pro tools, it's another language. Yeah. Like I remember yeah. getting pro tools and stuff and being like, wow, it, it, it's learning Chinese or Mandarin or uh, like it's, it's, yeah. you need the, understanding of the bottom level before you can ever go ahead and, and you know, yeah, you know, cut and paste and stuff like that. Like it's, it's, it's another That's language a journey within itself. I would imagine it's For not sure. just pressing record and no, no. mixing volume. It's cutting this frequency and boosting that yeah. frequency, which it's your true. normal ear doesn't understand, but you like, you can tell like, all right, the guitar should be here in this frequency. Like that's, yeah. how, wh how do you get into that? Is that, is it natural? Is it learned? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all learned. Um, I, I mean, I think that there's. See, I, I, it's got. A, it's a, it also natural. Yeah, you have an You you have yeah. to have a, a proclivity towards mm -hmm. it. You know, I, I think, I think I clearly have a natural inclination towards m music of various kinds, and I think that um, you know, I'm clearly kind of i'm you p peculiarly built to approach music in the way that i approach it so that i don't think is learned but most of the actual things that i do i know how to do from just hours and hours yeah. and hours Time and in. hours and hours and hours of work i mean and that's the thing is like i'm a crazy workaholic person so and and it's not it's just that's what I enjoy. I have a hard time with leisure. I don't really enjoy it. Yeah. Like the second, the second there's some, not something to do, that's, I want to find something to do. Right. You know, so you know it, it, that's just kind of that. So I think that that's the and 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 music is great because it's just this endless um, uh, uh, well of opportunities to learn stuff. There's, you can't possibly even come close to even learning even the little tip of the top, you know? So I'm never drawn done, towards yeah. the things that are the deepest and most um, immersive as far as the things I learn. So that's why I end up with orchestra, you know? And, 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 and like, that makes sense that I ended up in this place because yeah. this is the thing where it's just like, you just, you can, you're never going to know 
what, right. what there's always you, something you're never going to yeah there's always something yeah. so you said that the, you never get the tip of the iceberg i found myself in ruts where i find that if i'm trying to write something it might mm. be a similar key or it might be the same type of progression and do you do you always find that there's something new to explore like like you're so, you're so prolific and you do so many different things. Mm. Do you always find that there's something new to reach for, something new to discover? Or do you ever, mm. because you're doing so much, do you ever find that you're repeating or, or how do you avoid repeating yourself? Um, a lot of the stuff that I do um, is collaborative, which I think helps with that for me. Um, so sometimes, you know, I'll take a break from working on my own stuff because I'm in a collaborative mode. So like if I'm doing an orchestration, like I do a lot of work with Amos, if I'm doing orchestration for him, it's his song mm -hmm. that I'm trying to imagine in an orchestral um, universe. Like, it, 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 And so I don't have to come up with the whole thing. It's kind of like... You know, I'm I'm fascinated by films. Like, I would love to work in films. I don't know if I would like to score movies so much because that seems... I, I mean, I would do it if somebody said, do you want to do it? Yeah. But, like, you know, filmmaking is such a collaborative thing. And we give certain people credit, and they certainly deserve it. Like, like let's say, Steven Spielberg or something, right? He's like, you know, mm -hmm. king of Hollywood, mm -hmm. like all of his stuff. But But all of those ideas were somebody else's ideas. You know, like there's a lot of hands in the pot. Yeah. Yeah. So it's almost impossible to repeat when you have different hands in the pot because yeah. each, you know, p part is going to rub off on the other. Yeah. Okay. And then when you're collaborating with others, so like you collaborate here and then you jump and you're collaborating with multiple people. So that yeah. helps. Now there's definitely that stuff help. that I do that's just on my own. And I think for me, um, I, I just am looking for, the thing that's going to make me feel the way that I want to feel. So it's a very much a selfish sort of enterprise. And I just keep, keep sort of peeling it away until it makes me feel that way. <laughs> How about so that's, that's the hours of, of work in the mm -hmm. studio. Yeah. So you just mentioned Amos. So for our listeners, mm -hmm. yeah. we're talking about Amos Lee. Amos Lee, yes. You've worked, he's a good friend of yours. You've good worked friend of mine, very yeah. closely with him. For sure. And you do um, his orchestrations. He, you, know, you did the, the live at Red Rocks. Do you want to just try to? Sure, yeah. We've been working together for, um, I guess, almost 10 years. Like, will it be almost 10 years? It's got to be almost 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, like maybe eight, eight, nine years. Um, and he, myself, and his music director, Jaron Olefsky, who's an amazing musician and a good friend of mine too, we've been kind of doing these orchestra things. And I just started conducting for him um, two, two or three years ago. Um, it was supposed to be in 2020 and it didn't happen. So then it was in 2021. Now there's been a number and then we got some coming up. Um, and... Yeah, it's just, it's been an interesting process of, you know, he has worked really, really hard, built a solid audience and a good reputation. And he's always interested in kind of just digging into the sort of mystery of music. And he's developed a fascination and, and genuine love and appreciation for classical music and has these amazing opportunities to perform with these great orchestras. Like we're doing a show with the Philadelphia orchestra in July, July 20th. Wow. Where's that at? At the man. At the man. Mm -hmm. And he's doing, he's playing with the Boston pops. We're doing three nights with the Nashville symphony next year. We're doing, I'm conducting the grand rapid symphony in, in July this year. And we've done the national symphony at Kennedy center and we've done Atlanta symphony. Wow. You'll be on site at these shows conducting. Yeah. Not, mm -hmm. not just writing the music, but being there physically to perform it. With Correct. I'm okay. not conducting the Philadelphia orchestra show and I'm not conducting the, Boston Pops, but I'm conducting the um, Grand Rapids Symphony, and I did the National Symphony at Kennedy Center, and done the Atlanta Symphony twice, and Colorado Symphony, and I'm going to do the National Symphony once, and the Dallas Symphony. So, a bunch of different orchestras, but in this capacity, it's just, um, you know, it's just an interest. It, it, it's it's wild. I mean, I don't know how it happened. It's, it's, it's you know, the wildest it's thing. Crazy. The wild the imposter syndrome. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what exactly. I mean. Like, what the hell am I doing? And what I'm thinking now is like, you know, conducting, and then. Then there's get the lead out. You're playing oh, with yeah, that. That's so, right. You know, yeah, the, the yeah, most yeah. famous, you know, Led Zeppelin tribute act 
in the country, if not the world. Yeah. And like you're, you're conducting on the, you're doing it all like the hodgepodge. You got your hand. Yep. In a lot of people in the Philadelphia area, they know you from, from there. Sure. Um, right. you were, how many right years? Uh, well, I'm not in get that anymore. Yeah, I know. But how many years were you with them? 12 years. 12. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yeah. So from the very beginning and then sort of pushing that, but you know, it's funny because it, it, at least from my perspective, there's this interesting through line to all of it. And I don't know if it's just mm. me trying to find some sense in it, but in a way, Get the Let Out is a very classical band. It's very like classical music. And I'd say to Paul yeah. Sinclair, who's the singer all the time, and he, he'll, he'll tell me, I tell him, I said, you're an opera singer who's just loves rock and roll. I would, I would say, yeah, I can see that. Because he see loves yeah. singing it the exact same way every time. He performs it like classical music. And the people who come see it, they are l enjoying it like classical music. There's no improvisation. There's nothing different. They, they, when they come and they hear him sing Kashmir, ev everything is the exactly the inflections. It's like as if it was singer. classical music. It was and, like and it's uh, like opera yeah, singers. If it was written down somehow, and they're kind of watching like that too, it's seated. That's what they want. Yeah, it's that's seated. what they want. You know, so and it's I said a seated them, version of a Led Zeppelin. You know, and I mean they'll they're like it'll it'll be a rock and roll thing. Like people are standing up, people are you know sure. losing their minds. Mm -hmm. But as far as what's happening, you know, like at the at the end of a of Cashmere, he's gonna go every single time. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I'm down, so down. Like he's gonna do that yeah. exactly the same yeah. way every yeah. single time, and everybody's gonna be like, Ooh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're gonna love it exactly the same way, which is classical music yeah. essentially. Yeah. Right. It's not You're anything trained, that Led yeah. Zeppelin was when Led Zeppelin was around, mm -hmm. and it's not anything that was seventies rock and roll when it was around. So it's it's ant it's the antithesis yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. You know. So in some respects, it made sense that I was in that project. How that project turned out because it's a very weird combination of classical music and non classical. Right music. up your alley. In a weird way, yeah. you know. And, and you, so were you like a utility man kind of for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what. I, yeah. When I. So That's keys, what I heard guitar, you were doing. Yeah, everything. Keys, guitar, and vocals, and like kind of whatever, whatever they did. like. I mean, I would learn stuff. You know, I learned harmonica for stuff, and I learned banjo for stuff. Like they were just like, we need. He would be like, yeah. oh, I need this. I'd be like, all right, I, I go back a, and I go. I was in a cover band yeah. like uh, twenty years ago, and the band manager was like a Philadelphia like legend band manager of all the like Mr. Green Jean Split Decision, all that kind of stuff, and he would speak in those terms, like sports terms. First round draft pick. Like if he got like a new guy that was 21 that had a bunch of girlfriends, he, you're, he's a first round draft pick. Oh, he's a second round draft pick, but he's a utility guy. He can play bongos. He can play little go. guitar. I'm like, yep, yep. But like to this day, I'm like, utility's pretty good. Cause Tyler here from Cherry Hill is going to be a first round draft he's pick. A, he's a, he's a first round. Frosted tips. Yeah. If you, oh, if you had frosted tips and a wristband, you were fucking, <laughs> <laughs> you were fuck, You were a first round. You were like the top. You were LeBron James. You're LeBron James if you had frosted tips. I just spilled my beer. <laughs> it's, it's quite all right. Let it. Let it. <coughs> all right. We got him off. It's all, all right, right, good. Was that um, Jimmy, Jimmy Marciano? Jimmy Marciano era? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, Jimmy Marciano era is the only era I know. What a tone, man. What a tone. And the look. And speaking of a rock, a rock look. Yeah, he's definitely... He stands like he's fucking fucking. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he stands so like he's in the sexy. middle of fucking. <laughs> like like what a very minimal effects, too. All volume and tone knob yeah. and just feel. Like, turn everything up. Playing the amp. And then like... work the guitar for volume, you know? Shout out Jimmy Marciano. Yeah, we used to have a good time, me and Jimmy Marciano. <coughs> yeah, ah, always taking care of his guys, H.T. No, H.T. is a fifth-round draft Thanks, pick, bro. but he's always there. <laughs> You're like Charlie Hustle. Yeah, I love Jimmy because Jimmy Jimmy's <laughs> example and like it's funny because it, you know I have such a deep respect <clears throat> excuse me for for classical musicians and really any musician who has had the discipline to form a relationship with an instrument. I don't really have for me instruments are kind of like their means to an end in a sense. My voice mm. I, I guess would be the instrument I've had the most sort of a close close relationship with but I never had lessons i don't know how it works i didn't take the time to really learn how it works i just know how to use it so i'm a terrible voice teacher like people people think oh you'd be a great voice teacher because you can see i'm just like i tried it once and the person's on i'm just like yeah. no don't there's a reason sing it like that there's, a, it like this, there's like a reason this. why oh, michael like, jordan no, doesn't like coach yeah exactly yeah, yeah, it's exactly, just like yeah. I, it's I the 12th know. guy on the team that can because he, he sees it differently <laughs> yeah he can he can talk it right but, you know gifted 
as you are, like it's di- it's different. You don't you're not necessarily a teacher, you know. Yeah, but you are, but you're you know. I mean, not less, voice lessons. Yeah, like I can teach. I can te- I can teach lessons, but just I'm just not a good voice teacher. But yeah, I got you. <clears throat> but um, but people who have, you know, I know people who, like my friend uh, Jennifer Orchard, like my friends who have gone to Curtis. You know, like my 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 Curtis uh, friends, because Curtis is such a unique place. This is a music school in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. and it's. It has a, like a ninety seven percent rejection rate. Wow. You know, it, it, you don't pay. Is it like a super like mega Berkeley like type idea, it's, or just different level? It's above. It's different level. Okay. It, it's like so basically Juilliard and and Curtis sort of kind of like have a little kind of rivalry as being which is the best music school in the world, mm-hmm. but Curtis kind of wins a little bit because Curtis is it's tiny. You know, it's like you super know, super super elite. So yeah. like. You know, Bernstein, Bernstein went there. Yuja Wong, um, Lang Lang, mm. um, you know, um, some some of the great. I mean, a lot of really. It, it's it's a silly sort of rivalry, but there's this sure. cute kind of rivalry. But it's yeah. this, it's this tiny school in Philadelphia, and you know, there's no age limit. Like there, you can apply at any age, and if you get in, there's no fee. And oh. you just become like that's all you do is you live and breathe classical music, and it's only classical music. Yeah, but they just create the most incredible, like Hilary Hahn and uh, um, did Edgar Meyer go there? Anyway, just like bonkers, bonkers people. So anyway, like if you're accepted to be in, they're like the this, the the board or whatever is like mm. this person is so gifted. Yeah, bring them in. And that's it, and we will nurture this gift. Yeah, and if okay. you if you yeah. went to Curtis, you're the best. You're just the yeah. best. Uh-huh. You know, it's it's kind of like it's Sick. like a it's like a Harvard. Sure, but it's tiny. I just read today, Paul. McC- <clears throat> I, well, I read like a Paul McCartney clip, and he said Bernstein was his favorite composer. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that's West Side Story, Curtis. right? West, yep, West, West Side, Side Story. Story yep. Yeah. But anyway, but those people, like my friend, you know Jennifer Orchard, or my friend Renan Meyer, these people who went to um, Curtis, and not you know, there's other people like this too. But I'm just pre- I'm singling them out just because they all have this in common, which is they have this relationship with their instrument. It's like they, they, they have this relationship with this instrument. They have spent so many hours with this instrument, mastering every aspect mm. of this instrument and being so deep. And I have such an envy for that because I've just never had the patience or, or, or fortitude to... Do something like that. You're I'm also just, jumping around a lot. I just jump around a lot. Yeah. Around, yeah, but with Jimmy, like you said, like he does, like it's almost like is, it's a part of his. Yep. And I've said that he said it to it's me. He's just like, body. He's like, dude, all I ever did was play electric guitar. He's like, that's the only thing I've ever done. <laughs> that's the only fucking thing I'm gonna do too, you know. And I and like it was great. And I was just like, it's fucking amazing. He and met the right guy with Michael Collins. He lives too, it and he? breathes it. Like that's if it. you yeah. see this guy that's walking down the street, you're gonna be like, what band do you play? Like lead electric guitar in? Yeah. Yeah, he's such, yeah, yeah, he's not sneaking into a job like at a corporate no, building. No. Yeah, yeah, this is what he does. But yeah, as far as like, and being, thank goodness he does. Uh, thank God, yeah, because it's a gift for all of us. But I see, like, the, you know, how it, he could sleep with it or whatever, but it wouldn't look right off of him. You know, <clears throat> yeah, his body contours to it. It kind of shapes like a little, like a, a like a little banana around the guitar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He told me a lot about it. I learned a lot about playing electric guitar from him. Yeah, yeah. You know so much about it. So let's talk about you. You have an upcoming gig. Let's talk I about do. that. Let's talk about um, sure the music that you're going to be playing and and, and where your uh, creative space is at this point. Sure, um, the current project. So I yeah, so I'm doing a, a show um, May 19th at a place called Harmony Hall. It's a very unique venue in Maniunk. I guess it was once a in the 1800s. It was a, a German social club. Which hmm. I don't really know what that means, but. We just we played. just played one, yeah. The, the Philadelphia German the Six Society Spring for a Garden. Wedding. It was yeah. like the oh, German yeah. Society of Philadelphia. We, yeah. we played a wedding there. And nice, yeah. yeah. Did it have like a high stage? This has a high it did. stage. Yeah, it, did. it, it had a really high, stage. high stage. That was it in Philadelphia, around Spring Garden like by Silk City, feet off the ground. Yeah, like yes. real high stage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, this uh, this one I went. They reached out to me because the guy. Um, um, Ilanov, I'm not going to say his name correct. I'm going to look at my phone and cheat here because yeah. I I want to make sure that I do say it correctly. Is um, and it's in Maniunk. It's in Maniunk. Okay. Yeah. No, Elon. Elon Isakov. Isakov. Elon Isakov. He sent a um, 
emailed to me and said he he in, enjoyed an album I put out and he has this place and you know they'd be interested in sponsoring a show and so I came and saw a string trio play there and just thought the vibe was really cool and they did it fully acoustic so I think I'm gonna do I'm doing a show there with a string quartet and we're just gonna do it full acoustic you know like not plug anything in no PA for the vocal or anything no PA for the vocal really is that the yeah. same wow. one that you did the just like a woman Bob Dylan yeah okay. yep. yeah yep it'll yeah. be the same quartet situation okay. so. So I got that show coming up um, and, you know, moved out to the suburbs. I got a, a, a mm. two daughters. They're about to be 10 or 12. So it's like, I'm not really doing a lot of shows, um, but, but I'm, I'm really terrible at booking shows and, and, but, but occasionally people will ask me to play shows and that's how I end up playing shows most of the time. <laughs> yeah. It's really terrible, terrible business plan. That's actually the ideal situation. I guess, but I it's feel like, like you when know, you put the work in is like, like all of us that put the work in when they're, you're young, a lot of times they, it does come to you when you're later yeah. Like, without even trying, like, you know, maybe not as much as you'd like the book, but I mean, monthly, I'm sure. I mean, it's just, it's just weird stuff. Just weird stuff happens. Yeah. And, and I have to convince my wife because, you know, we moved to suburbs and it's life's more expensive out here and, you know, I'm a freelance now. So it's like, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm, and I'm just saying, I'm just like, it's okay, honey. And she's just like, I don't know. Like, are you <laughs> sure? I'm like, it's going to be okay. And then, and then, and then she leaves and I'm like, fuck, it's going to be okay. I was like, I think well, it's going to be okay. It was well, okay well, last year, you know? <laughs> and then, uh, but then it ends up just being okay. So, I mean, you know, <clears throat> the original music that I do, it, it doesn't really add to the, uh, to my income very much, but it, it also kind of allows me to sort of just do whatever I want. So I am working on uh, my first opera. Um, I just started, um, it's kind of like, I mean, it's an opera, but it's not going to be like, rawr, rawr, rawr. it's not like, it's not that kind of an opera. So it's probably going to be a cross between a musical and an opera, but it's not going to be a musical because it's not going to have all the stuff that makes musicals terrible. Well, not right, to go off on yeah. a tangent, but if it's not the whole, then what make well, maybe doesn't like, that make it an opera? Well, rock opera is like Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah, it's not going to be a rock opera. That. So no. in between that and that, what- so I think what makes an opera, and I guess it, it dep- I guess other people could could you know I guess it's up for debate, but to me, an opera is something where the music ha- has a much more functional part of. Uh, representing the emotional narrative that's either happening in the moment or I- over the course of the uh, production. So, like a musical, like Oklahoma, sure, great fucking musical. I'm not saying mm-hmm. anything bad about Oklahoma, but like shout out Oklahoma, yeah, shout out Oklahoma. Yeah, <laughs> but in you between know? the songs, it's not a hey Sandy, why'd you say that? And then they bust into something like the music speaking more. Yeah. Well, wait. What are you talking about? Which, like, like, like in a musical, how like you know, there's the song, and then there's like the dialogue that's usually like chatty or whatever, and then it leads into another song. Are you saying the music kind of well, tells more of the dialogue? Um, or the uh, feeling, not so much. Mm-hmm. I, I guess what I'm it, like. So let's say, do you guys know Oklahoma? Do you know this musical? No. I don't know Oklahoma. You should check no. Oklahoma. You should check out Oklahoma. I don't know much opera either, but I know Nessa Dorma or whatever that Nessa is. Nessa Dorma is a beautiful and that, aria. And that, I can hear like the swells and like all that. Like that's, yeah. to me, I'm like, okay, I, I, I know have a little bit of by the uh, emotional show content. background. Like Jesus Christ, Rent. I love Rent, um, but not much. I guess so, and this would just be my take on it, but the, the music underneath it needs to serve more than just a kind of a, a accompaniment a functional role accompanying the song. Okay. It needs to be a character of its own in a sense. It needs to have like kind of a depth of emotional feeling that can carry through the whole thing. Not just a bed for the vocals. Yeah, not just a bed for the vocals. Right, exactly. Not just, and I'm not to take something for the dialogue to lay on instead. It's yeah, exactly. Not to take anything away from it. That's, that's my take on it. So sometimes it blurs the line. Like for instance, things that maybe have blurred the line are, um, you know, Miss Saigon or even Hamilton to a certain degree, I which loved kind Hamilton. of like, loved you know, it. blur the lines. Of, it did blur. Of, I, I of loved it for what, what it is. is. So yeah. almost like a non-native speaker of the language can somewhat follow along the emotional arc of what's happening on the music alone. Yes. Okay. That would mm-hmm. be, that would be a big mm-hmm. part of it. And then I mm-hmm. guess there's also a so certain what? kind of, of high drama aspect mm-hmm. to something that I think serves 
the term opera. So I'm not really sure what it is, but I'm I love the the subject matter, and I think it's going to be really really great. It's called the um, the Founding Wheel is the name of the opera. cool, um, and it's about the Ospedalia de Piete, which is a a place in uh, Venice. Um, this particular opera is taking place. This story is taking place in uh, uh, the 1760s, um, and what the Ospedalia de, 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 de Pieta was, um, which was around for 400 years, it was a place where you could drop off your unwanted female infant. No you would put them in a wheel mm. and turn the wheel and they would go back oh my into, God. and the nuns would take your female infant so you didn't throw them in the canal, and they would turn these young ladies into the greatest musicians in Europe. And thank God that took an uplifting turn. But they're the ones writing the music. Holy, 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 uh, the, the monks yeah, behind yeah. it. <laughs> and you know Vivaldi. Yeah, sure. Vivaldi, Vivaldi yeah. was core composer at the Ospedalia de Pieta for a number of years. And these virgins would perform behind a screen, though, because back in those days, you weren't allowed to see a woman open her mouth because it would oh, encourage you it to think. The men. It was yeah. too yeah, suggestive. It was too yeah, suggestive. Yep. the men. So these girls, but they were trained at such a high level that people would travel from all over Europe to hear the um, instrumentalists, and they had a full orchestra and choir that would perform on Sundays, and then and then there's all there's all kinds of interesting stuff too that goes along with it. But I have it all the story figured oh, out. But anyway, so that that so I'm working on that, and then I have an album that I'm in the midst that I'm working on that's called Iris. That's about um, a Cougar kind Dolls of color, like, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Called, the whole up, thing. I give just, up forever to touch you. It's just it's just it's twelve different versions of <laughs> of Buffalo reinterpretation yeah, and, and new exploration. Yep. Buffalo's yep. favorite Iris. band. I just felt like they could have gone so much further. You know what I mean? <laughs> Who better? Mm. But it's about a um, this like scroll of some sort or some kind of text that's found, and it's kind of like a future past story where it's a future civilization that found this thing, which is the ruin of yet another future civilization. So it's a long, long Whoa. time in the future. It's kind of like a Dune type thing, you know, where it's like so far in the future that there's like, there's like the ancient Egyptians that haven't happened yet to them. You yeah, know what I mean? Like yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. And um, like, cause I love that, like rusty robots, you know, like that kind yeah, of thing, yeah. you know, like yeah. I love that. So, it, so this is a thing where these people find this scroll and it's warning of, it tells the story of this civilization that ended up destroying itself, like through this invention that um, it created. So I'm working on that that kind of album, and then um, and then just a bunch of other projects. Concept oh, album, I guess. So, yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah, I it's like, it's really interesting like, to me when you explain that. It kind of like it's like maybe climate change, like now, like it's not the problem, but it's, like that's the problem. It's all about AI, which is funny because <laughs> I started working on this thing like a year and a half ago, and it's like I got to finish it quick because it's going to be like old news. Yeah, the story's yeah. happening. Yeah, the like, story's happening. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you know, the idea is that Iris is this like amazing thing that was created in this in this uh, past society that ended up destroying itself. And then they left behind this warning Whoa. that this new society finds. Yeah. No and I hope, yeah, yeah, I hope they heed the warning. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. So your upcoming show, are you going to, what, what can people expect of the upcoming show? This, um, anything, any glimpses of this new material? Or I haven't arranged any of it for string quartet yet. Okay. So I, I don't have any of the new material, but it'll mostly be some, some stuff from my past albums. I finished a trilogy of albums based on the book Siddhartha by Herman Hesse. So I did three albums that kind of loosely follow that narrative and explore themes. So we'll do a lot of music from that. There, there's um, Siddhartha's the first one. The second one's called Kamala and the Child People. And the last one's called Murmurs of the River. So that's three albums and they all kind of fit together as one thing. Beautiful. Where can uh, people find you? Uh, Spotify and Apple Music and Amazon Music and all that stuff, all the streaming services. And then um, I have a website that's just andrewlipke.com. We'll, we'll tag all that. Awesome. And, you know, all your, I appreciate all your uh, socials. Make sure our, guy, our people check him out. 
Yeah. I appreciate so all, that. To all of our hoagies out there, please support our buddy Andrew Lipke. Check out his yes. music. A great, prolific artist that we're, we're excited to have on with us today. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Good to have you. Uh, appreciate no, it. We, uh, as, uh, as hoagie times, we like to give our, our guests a gift. Okay. It's what, not like, you know, you know, it's something I steal from work. So it, sometimes it's a calendar, maybe some stationary pens or steals something. Steals from work. What do you got? More. What is it? Oh, I got thanks, a couple man. of Swedish fish. Wow, for you, look at that. And individually, individually wrapped, yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, that yeah, is so great. Carol, everything. That's really so, useful. For you, pal. You know, it thanks, was great to man. meet you, yes. Now, I appreciate that. Yes. That's zipline fuel, if you will. That is zipline fuel, yeah. I, I, I can tape them to my body for safety purposes. That hey, like. padding. Perfect. Padding. Yeah, perfect padding. Perfect. Great. great to have you. Thank thanks, you, Hoagie Time.